Happy New Year, Xbox and PC gaming enthusiasts. My name is Clinton Navigator Bowman, and this is the sixth episode of The Experience. Reloaded, rebooted, or just the plain experience. Whatever you want to call it, it is yours. Call it. And I'm joined by Keith Shadowhacks and Mitchell. Keith, what's going on? What's up, peoples? Happy New Year to everybody. Hope you have a great 2017, and hopefully we don't have as many deaths as we did in 2016 people are gonna die it is inevitable it is the circle of life yes i i get that but holy shit compared to 2014 and 15 2016 was like was like the purge yeah but to be fair to be fair at least it wasn't like the 1600s when the plague happened that doesn't count we can't say that this is true very very true that being said we're just gonna move on to a couple topics so keith and i were just watching some videos over the last few days after we um recorded and uploaded experience number five you can go check that out on the out of haven.net and we kind of got a little pissed off keith more so than me but i i kind of got perturbed by a couple of these topics and it kind of involved the pc quote unquote master race and how pc gaming isn't in good as good a shape as console gaming yet the numbers say something different now, before we go any further, I'll be the first person to say I don't really like that name that's given to PC gamers or PC elitists. I like to consider us enthusiasts, not master race. Uh, that's something I really wish would die. Obviously, not a lot of people share that or people that do share that, they do it in satire, they do it in fun. But the sad part is people don't take it that way. Just want to toss that out there. I mean, I don't like that term either. But at the same time, you know, the PC, the PC community, um basically run by league of legends and world of warcraft and games like those and dungeon fighter online um and, and you got the mobile market ran by pokemon go and clash of clans and clash royale and puzzles and dragons and candy crush and candy crush isn't even technically the, the king of mobile gaming anymore nope it's pokemon go really let's take a look at the numbers right from jump because the numbers right from jump are very telling keith now the last in the last year in terms of finances like generated now interactive entertainment as a whole generated almost a hundred billion dollars in revenues this year that's a lot of money keith it's a lot more money in my pocket right now yes yeah, a lot more money i think most of us have in our pockets i mean i ain't warren buffett so i don't even think he has that much money you can always find out 2.7 billion dollars went to vr which is you know for the first year that's a fairly good number a uh, gaming video made 4.4 billion. Esports made almost a billion dollars, like about 900 million, uh, 892 million, to be exact. Console gaming made 6.6 .6 billion. Mobile gaming made 40.6 billion dollars, and including social PC free-to-play, PC subscriptions, like EA, like Origin Access, as well as premium PC games. PC gaming as a whole made $35.8 million. Now, compare PC to console and Keith, it is a 5 to 1 ratio in terms of money and revenue, driven largely by free-to-play online titles as well as downloadable games. I agree with you, and, and, and keep in mind, I'm not exactly sure if these numbers are 100% accurate as far as the number of sales, just because Valve with their Steam platform it's so protective on the amount of sales. I don't know if, if uh, EA is the same way with Origin or other digital distribution sites like that, but I know Valve is very protective for how much they sell. So it could be a lot larger. Right. So that's, that's something to think about for a second. That is definitely something to think about, but at the same time, you know, honestly, like last year in terms of Steam sales in general, like in terms of Steam sales in general in 2015, Valve generated a total of three point five billion dollars. Yeah, it's it's nothing to joke about. It's here's the thing that a lot of people, and I hate to be this guy, but a lot of console gamers, exclusive con uh, console gamers, don't understand. When people mention the PC, the PC gets a bad rap because people were thinking about PC gaming seven, eight, nine years ago when it was in a bad shape you know getting a uh, uh, windows uh, yeah games for windows live was terrible steam was just coming up in its infancy and it just wasn't all together right you know, steam is a lot better now we have other places again we have gog we have ea origin we have ubisoft um epic games has one bethesda has one and things are becoming a lot more i, I, I want to say coherent 
everything is meshing together a lot better. Right. Um, so obviously people are seeing this and, and it's not like the PC doesn't have its own exclusives, but it has tons of exclusives. They're just different than what most people are used to on the console gaming side of things. Look at it this way. If the PC wasn't doing as well as it is right now, do you think all these companies, especially these Japanese companies with, the, with their niche games, will be bringing them over to the PC? I mean, look at all the fighting games that have come over to the PC over the last two years. No, let's not even talk about the fighting game. Let's really just sit down and talk about the niche games. Because okay. honestly, yeah, between, like Dejica game, De between Dejica Games and Compile Heart and Ify, Idea Factory, they've released a lot of their previously console or previous Japan-only niche-style games on PC in the last few years. I don't know how many Neptunia games have come over to the PC in the last year. Yeah, not to mention role-playing games are coming over to the PC. You know, like games Bandai that we've Namco. never would have seen. Bandai Namco started releasing Tales games on PC. That came over. Um, not just um, Fem Fal Falcom is bringing over a lot more of their games. Yeah. We got Xanadu Next, which has been overseas for the Nokia, Nokia uh, for years. The Engage for God knows how long. You oh, know, what to call it? God God Eater Two, Final know, Fantasy, the yeah. Final Fantasy games. We're getting we're, the PC game, the PC community, the PC gaming market is just getting a, a plethora. I keep using that word now. Thanks a lot of games that we wouldn't have seen on that platform five, six years ago, and that's yeah. saying something. It, and sure, there's some of these are old games, but they're coming over. That's the big picture. Now, I noticed in one of those uh, videos that I watched, there was a comment that said, "Oh, but they brought all their old games over because they weren't selling on another console." Well, okay, that's a positive. If they weren't selling on another system and they're like, hey, we could probably make this money on the PC market, I don't know what idiot that didn't take business 101 would say, hey, if it's not selling here, let's bring it over here and have it sell. And that, you know, and you take, take the example of business 101, that's what Remedy Entertainment did with Alan Wake. Yep. Yep, it sold like crap. And they brought it to the PC and they stated, they went on comment stating that. That game made up the everything record. that they lost yeah. in record time. Yeah, they, they went on the record to say that. I agree with that 100%. So it's more or less, it, 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 it's more or less that PC gaming now, as opposed to eight, nine years ago. Now, honestly, I'll tell you straight up, Keith, you know me for, we known each other since, what, July of 2014? I don't know you, pal. Anyways, we've known each other for about two years. A little over two years you know that i was not completely into pc gaming when i first came on the outer haven i was largely console and now my pc game i i just started dabbling in you know upgrading my processor and stuff and upgrading my video card like i didn't really have a powerful pc to really do anything until now well you really don't really need to have a powerful machine for pc gaming but no, it but helps I mean, but for me but for me you know i wanted to have that power so if i ever did go to exclusively pc gaming i would be able to play most games without having to worry about frame rate drops to a degree so there's that and the fact that pc is are honestly becoming idiot proof to a degree they're literally like lego blocks at this point almost Still have to have some technical know-how so gaming pcs are easier are easier and cheaper to to have especially with the steam with the steam machine movement uh let's not bring that up because the steam machine movement was a great initiative block the inception was very flawed for but you still but you still praise the alienware alpha though okay because it's not a steam machine the steam machine okay so the steam machine was the name coined for machines like the Android Alpha, small form factor machines that had just enough power to compete against the Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4, but in the living room or in the bedroom or where you didn't want to put a full-fledged gaming PC. Right. Those machines were supposed to be created and have Steam OS installed on them. The problem with that is Valve kept dragging their feet and these companies got tired of waiting so they just said, okay, we're going to install Windows on these machines. So they're not technically Steam machines, but that's the name that everybody gives them. Well, yeah, okay. So the Alienware Alpha, what we know about the Alienware Alpha with Dell was just like, now nah, we can't wait. We want to release our Alienware Alpha. But now. remember, remember, before the Alienware Alpha came out, Dell or Alienware had already had a small factor PC. But when you talk, is it not the X51, but. The... Yeah, yeah, no, the X51. Oh, it was the X51? Yeah, the X51 was the precursor to, okay. the, to the Alpha Alienware. Well, Alienware Alpha. 
Okay, fair enough. Like that, I didn't know. See, I'm learning new things every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, you got the a and that's a what thirteen hundred dollar machine. Now you take a look at the yeah. Alienware Alpha. You take a look at the Alienware Alpha, and at its at its base, you're looking at a three hundred and twenty dollar computer. Yeah, but keep in mind that the X fifty one was a, was an enthusiast machine. It had, well, yeah. it had it had it had liquid cooling. You were able to swap out your video cards. It was it it's it, it's a <clears throat> losing my voice there. Excuse me. It is a uh, it is like I said, an enthusiast machine. It was meant to be a full fledged PC in a small form factory case that you can put anywhere. It's more complex than the Alienware Alpha. I mean, some of these some of these X fifty one machines were meant for four K gaming. Right. You can't do that with these Alienware Alphas. You just simply cannot do it. The Alpha is a great machine. Well, I wish I. The high end Alienware Alpha has a GTX 960, which isn't ready for 4K anyway. Right, but at the same time, you know, I would love to get my hand on one of those machines. Maybe Alienware could send one over so we can review it, but I would never. This is just me, who I am. I would never buy a pre built machine. I just won't do it. Unless, I, it's, I, unless it's for a gift for somebody. Like, even I, I would do it for a gift. If I'm I would do it do for it. a gift, but I yeah. would probably build it first. I've been building PCs since I was nine years old. I'm 40 now. I, I would build it before i would buy it god damn i feel so old <laughs> yeah that's, that's what i'm saying i would build it first yeah and and that's the thing so for me it's like i'm looking at the alienware alpha I'm, and this and the alienware alpha i'm looking at is basically the hunt the thousand dollar alienware alpha with the i7 uh 6700 t and the g and the 4 gig 960 that's something that was like oh happy you know merry christmas here's a pc gaming machine that's not necessarily a PC. I know we're getting off track, but with that no, but machine, it's not necessarily off track. It does make sense because it, it kind of plays into it because it's more so that game PC gaming is more accessible now. Yeah, and this is why PC gaming as a whole. Though I think that configuration, I think yeah. that for, that configuration is a bad configuration. Just saying because what, you're, what you're still about? getting you're still getting a nine six hundred for an i seven. Yeah. So that that 9600 is bottlenecking. The 960 is bottlenecking that uh, processor. But aren't you aren't you able to like? I think the Alienware aren't you able to upgrade that? From what I understand, I don't think you can upgrade the Alphas. Oh yeah, I don't think you can either. I'm looking at it right now because it's a certain it's it's a uh, it, it's it looks certain thing. But there is the Alienware graphics amplifier if you want. Yeah, you can pay for that, but uh, ah. yeah. Yeah, no thanks. But though, yeah. though somebody did a test on it, I think it might have been Linus or or somebody that said it does a really good job. So you know, right. the 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 bus is a lot bigger than it was back in the day. Right. I think it connects via either with Thunderbolt. So that's more than enough bandwidth to compete against a PCI or PCI Express connection with the bus going to the processor. Yeah. So I don't see how that's a big deal. It might work perfectly. Right. I don't but know. yeah, but going back to the conversation, going back to the conversation at hand. PC gaming is becoming a lot more accessible. It is. It and has that's been. the most important part. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if you if you look at it, as far as accessibility, uh, the negative stigmas that were there with old PC, so there's like four of them. You need to be at a desk. No, you can take your PC and hook it up to a TV. You've been able to do that since HDMI. Yeah. Uh, people were taking their big, ugly-ass towers and putting them in their front rooms for years. They're just yep. gotten a lot better where there's small, small form factor machines now. You got your mini ITX, you got your mini, uh, eight, what is it, micro ATX? Oh, it's micro ATX, mini micro ATX, ITX. And mini ATX. And you've got those moved them to the front room. You got the alphas. You've got the Steam Links now, which are yep. pretty good as well. I have so, one. So that is not an excuse anymore. But there's also another thing where, oh, you always have to update your drivers. No, you don't really upgrade upgrade your drivers that much on PCs anymore. Outside of your outside of your graphics card. Outside your graphics card, and even then, even with the Nvidia's case or Nvidia's case, sometimes still he has a bad thing. If you are at a stable driver, you want to stay there unless you need to upgrade. Yeah. There's no reason to constantly upgrade your driver unless it offers you a, a substantial performance upgrade or a, a specific game that's coming out requires it. Right, and then going back to going back to the. You know, there's a lot of places where you can buy pre-made machines that are really good, such as, such as I buy power and other, other um, places like that. I buy power and uh, Cyber, Cyber power, power, Digital Falcon. There's tons of places. Puget Systems, tons of places. Falcon Northwest. But if um, you really want if you really want to spend money, no thanks. 
But uh, <laughs> that uh, there's a thing that you can't use a gamepad. I, I don't know who keeps bringing up that dumb. A a okay, let's see. Um, no, Aiden. don't even do it. Don't even do it. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's do it for the benefit of those without flash photography. Just do a blanket. Just blanket it. Just say this. Any Next. controller out there can be used on a PC. Put it this way. Nat there's native support for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One controllers. Fuck out of here with that shit. Like, and now DualShock 3 in the past, DualShock 4 now. Is that 4? Uh, if you got Bluetooth, you can connect the Wiimote to that shit. Yep. Like, come on, son. There's like, not a controller outside of the Wii touchpad. And, and I'm probably sure somebody's got that to work as well. Oh, they're going to get it to work. Or have already gotten work. I've never checked because I never cared. Yeah. It's the, the PC is the most accessible gaming platform out there to use a multitude of controllers. So that one is just dumb. Right. The other one is there are no good games to play in the PC. And I slapped myself. It's like, really? What are you talking about? Right. Outside of the first party exclusive games on consoles, the PC has just about every game a console has and then some. And I'm not trying to turn this into a PC versus console debate because oh, I by want the way, that. Somebody actually did get the Wii U touchpad to work. Okay. See, I want that argument to go away. That needs to die. That that, that entire debate needs to stop. And we need to recognize as gamers that we're all gamers, and we play. We want to play, but uh, that that's that's preposterous. It's why would you say that without looking and doing the actual fact finding? It's just like you're trying to win an argument by throwing out stupid comments, and it, it doesn't work. Because somebody's gonna go back in. Somebody's gonna go back in and like, you just said this is impossible. This game doesn't have this, but here it is right here. What are you talking about? Now, granted, now, granted, a lot of the argument against the PC can go can be attributed to Warner Brothers, and and, and their and their levels of fuckery that they've committed in, well, the, in the past. I'm probably the most uh, vulgar one when it comes to Warner Brothers and their whole vulgar. Batman vocal. No vulgar, vulgar as well. If you see my articles with them about well, yeah, them, obviously, yeah, okay. about Batman Arkham Knight and a couple other games. But at the same time, they put out some decent games too. So I'm not going to throw them 100% under their bus. I do think their business practice is really ass backwards. I think how they handled Mortal Kombat X was the, possibly the worst way they could have done it. It's the same way with Injustice and how the PC gamers aren't getting Injustice too when they've shown that there's interest for it. Yep. But um, they're not the only ones who's made a big screw up in, in the PC gaming market. I'm not going to name the other ones because we know who they are. I'm just happy that, you know, the PC... Uh, gaming platform as a whole is getting more and more recognition right. and again and it's not because uh, I hate consoles or I want consoles to die because it's far from it I, I think that all platforms should be on an equal footing and it should be up to, it should be based on the power of the software that sells any particular uh, system I mean right. if you look at the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 their architecture is damn similar as is the PC. There are a couple of shortcomings on the Xbox One compared to the PlayStation 4. And there's a couple of shortcomings from the PlayStation 4 from a low mid-level PC. Right. Obviously, the only the, the saving grace of the consoles is their closed, arc, their closed system where the uh, PC is an open system, which is also the PC's biggest advantage, yet their downfall. Advantage, yeah. yeah. You know, they can have, you can have like a million configurations and it's up to the developers to do config, uh, match these configurations. And most of these developers are like, fuck that. We don't want to do that. It's too much time. It's too much money. And it's a waste of... We don't want to do it. We just simply will not do it. Right. And you can tell which games those are because they come out to be unoptimized pieces of crap. Uh, oh, absolutely. But it's just more so they're making concessions. They're making concessions because, you know, the PC game on it. But then there's the games that really come out for PC and designed for PC, such as Overwatch, which was a game that was originally designed simply for PC. Right. And I know our other topic was we don't want PC gamers don't want uh, consoles dying. So I'm going to step into that topic real quick and we can step in and out as you know, you go. But um, of course, there was a video, another video. We're calling out these people. We just won't see who they are. They made a video and they did it in fun. But yet the comments and the controversies they, they provoked in their comments um, uh, told a different story. So they stated that PC gamers, PC elitist gamers want consoles to die. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Like I said, I play PC games. The PC game, the PC is my primary gaming platform. It is not my only gaming platform because there are other games on the PlayStation and the Xbox and the Wii and the Game Boy and the DS everything the vita that i like to play so right. 
if those systems would die, it would cause a chain reaction. First of all, we wouldn't have those games. Second of all, these studios that make these games for consoles and then port them over to the PC eventually would stop doing it. And right. they may not have any interest in developing for the PC whatsoever. And then there are other games, we'll take The Witcher 3 as an example. They downgraded that game not because they had multiple configurations for PC. They downgraded because excuse me, they wanted to make it run properly on the consoles. But the thing with this was they came out and said that if it wasn't for the consoles, there would be no PC version. The consoles for them was more provided them with more um, revenue than the PC would have, or they so they thought when they were doing the development for this game. So right. if it wasn't for the console, it wasn't for the PlayStation 4 version, Xbox One version, we would never see a PC version, which goes hand in hand there are plenty of games that we have on the pc like xcom 2 is one of the most ones i can think of right now yeah that started off on the pc and eventually they were like you know what people are on the console are asking for this game here you go and it wasn't not too long ago that xcom 2 was announced for the consoles and they gave it to the consoles yep so it works both ways if anything as a pc gamer if i didn't have my playstation 4 i'd be a little bit envious of play people on the playstation 4 because they have access to games like uncharted and um well, not tech anymore because we have that Gran Turismo and things like that. I couldn't play them on my PC. So if the PlayStation 4 didn't exist or the PlayStation brand didn't exist, I wouldn't have these games. Oh, you're right. You're I would love right. and I would love to have Uncharted on my PC. Obviously, that's not going to happen. There will never be a game like Uncharted for the PC because the Xbox One. <laughs> well, the Xbox One has their games as well. But the, the thing is, this is also the big disadvantage of the pc is sony has their first party markets the first yeah. party teams microsoft has their first party teams the most first party team for pc is valve and even valve then. valve blizzard and a handful of others the pc market doesn't have a first party team it doesn't have somebody looking out for its market share because it's in its own vacuum as much as Microsoft wants to do that, I don't think it's people will never let them do it. People would, would will likely stop happen. playing. Would never. That's yep. why Valve started um, Steam OS. They didn't like the fact that they didn't want a hostile OS running everything, even though it does run everything. But that's what makes the PC platform so unique: is that it doesn't have first-party support, but yet they get the games. It right. can never. It would never be able to do that because there's there so many different players involved in PC market. When it comes to Microsoft, it's Microsoft, when it comes to Sony, Sony. When it comes to the PC, it's everybody. Microsoft does games. Sony has a couple games on the PC from their from their mobile market that came yeah. over. Indie developers are in there. Triple A studios are in there. Everybody's in the PC market. There's no way to physically regulate that. There's no way for one person or one company or one entity to control it. It just can't happen. Nope. Because the second you do that, you kill any kind of freedom that it has. You're right. Again, th on that. that's why it's one of its biggest advantages, but at the same time, it's one of why its flaws. we'll never see. Well, I won't say never say. I will never say we'll see something. We won't see something like Uncharted, but right. the company has to be devoted and has to have the backing. Perfect example with Star Citizen, PC only. It's only PC only because. It was developed for PC only. It was Chris Roberts' dream to have a PC only. He When it moved to the consoles, he came out flat out and said, you need a good PC to run this game, and the consoles can't do it. Damn. Or, I mean, or the wrong, new though. Unreal Tournament. They came out and said, this is going to be a PC only platform or PC only game because of what we're doing. Right. This is for the first person shooters who love Unreal, who want to bring it back, who want to play 144 hertz monitors and shit like that. And, um, Bethesda said the same thing about Quick Champions. I don't know if many people remember that. They said it's PC only because we're taking advantage of everything the PC has to offer and the consoles can't do it. Right. So there are systems in place for certain games. So PC has this, console has that, and it's fine. Everybody can coexist. The only ones who can't coexist are the Xbox fanboys, the PlayStation fanboys, right. and the PC leaders. There is, there is no room for those people. And even, and even the Nintendo fanboys too. There... We're at a point where we need to just say, okay, look, this is retarded. This right. is this is silly. We shouldn't be fighting over this. You got your games. I got my games. Hey, come on, Miles, play my games. I'll come on, you guys, play your games. Right. But, like I said, in a previous podcast, unless we have one box that all people are running and playing games on, we're never going to have it. But 
the fact that somebody would come out and basically say that PC games with the consoles to die is re- it's just it's it's crazy talk. Asinine, no, yeah. we don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. All the advancements, sure, okay, sure. The PC runs all the consoles left and right as far as power. We know this. We understand this. It's been, it's been like this for a while now. We're not we're not debating that. But at the same time, the consoles have the backers. They have the support. They have the companies that are giving you guys these triple A fantastic titles. Right. Why would we not want to play those? And, and and that's the thing, and that's what they. I I I I definitely don't understand the mentality of the people in the exclusive console market. And it's like, well, you know, I just want something that I could be able to plug and play. And I'm like, I under see that I understand. Consoles will always do well because it's easy to plug and play, but financially they're not doing as good. They're doing fantastic. I mean, I mean, six point six billion is fantastic. But... And and not to cut you off, here's the thing. Now correct me if I'm wrong. But did Sony not come out and say the reason why they did the PlayStation 4 Pro is because they knew they were losing gamers to the PC market? Yeah, I think that's what I'm they pretty said. sure that's what they said. I can find that out, but keep keep talking, man. I can find that out for you. Because yeah, a lot of people are saying, you know, Forbes magazine in 2014 basically says the console war is over that PC has already won. Uh, you know, PS4 loses Hellblade because the consoles are years behind the PC in XY. Uh, Sony boss said the Sony boss said that Andrew House said that the company wants to keep players from ditching consoles because the PS4 is going after the PC market. So you're right. So yeah, uh, essentially there's a dip mid console life cycle where the players who want the very best graphical experience will start to migrate to PC, and obviously that's where it's to be had. House told the House had told the Guardian, we wanted to keep those people within our ecosystem by giving them the very best and highest performance quality. So there you go. If he said it, the guy that you worship and love, Sony guys, if he's telling you the reason why this came out is because we knew we were in a losing position as far as people, my hands are in the air. I, I I don't know what to tell you. He recognized this. There must be something going on there. There must be some kind of shift. Again, end all is we want to keep playing games on the platform that we like. You like the PlayStation 4? Fantastic. We love you for it. You want to play your PC? Great. That's fun. Play your Xbox? Great. That's fantastic. Going into 2017, I'm going to make it an initiative for for the Outer Haven to try and bridge that. You know, we don't want people fighting over that. We don't want you coming over to the site saying, oh, PlayStation 4 sucks or Xbox is the best or vice versa. No, we, we don't want that. We will definitely point out the shortcomings of all platforms. We do that now. I just got done doing the Spacehawk review. And it's a piece of shit. (laughs) And I'm not going to lie and say, oh, don't play this because it's a piece of shit. No. You want to play it if it's a piece of shit? That's fine. I'm going to tell you it's a piece of shit. I'm not going to tell you, well, the PC is a piece of shit because this game's a piece of shit. Well, no. One game does not make a bad system, guys. This is true. That's that's really dumb thinking because you can say that for anything. Whoa. This hamburger I got from Winnie's is shit. The rest of the food must be shit. Well, no, no. Maybe that was a bad burger. Maybe the guy that made your burger didn't know what the hell he was doing. Maybe it was undercooked. Maybe you were just in a sh- crappy mood that day. Right. It could be any variable. I mean, at the end of, at the end of all, and, and this, this will be the end of the conversation, I think it's just there is a misconception, a really, really bad misconception in terms of PC gamers and console gamers, and everybody needs to just slow it down for a little bit and understand that yes while pc gaming is definitely doing better than console gaming everybody will have their own individual preferences and you can't fault people for that and even still the pc marketing could fall flat on its face the playstation 4 pro could take off the scorpio could come out and and do crap or vice versa etc etc you don't know how things are going to go Again, wishing one particular market or one branch of the gaming to die is simply preposterous and would be devastating for everybody. Indeed. All right. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to get out of here for the new year. I believe we talked about what we're looking forward to in the new year already in terms of PC and Xbox gaming. We are making it a goal that every week we're going to be doing a brand new episode of the experience so the next episode of the experience will come to you on the 7th of january january, january. it's january yo man 
Think about it, man. It's New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, depending on what you're hearing. Or after New Year. It's 2017. It's already, the, yeah, it's already the future. It's almost, it's almost, what, the second for some people? Yeah, for some, yeah, definitely for some people. It's like, how the hell? Time zones make me crazy. Just out to the international dateline. But that being said, everyone, I hope everybody had a safe New Year's. And uh, Keith, any final thoughts before we get out of here? Final thoughts. Yeah, January, guys. Uh, the Switch. The Switch. I'm interested to see what Nintendo has up their sleeves. I'm hoping it's the system that gets Nintendo out of their slump. Indeed. Because the Wii and the Wii U were not those systems. And I'm not talking about the 3DS because I am not a handheld gamer. Haven't been for quite some time. Yep. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, don't go. Don't be Ronda Rousey. Don't go in. Oh, man. To 2017 unprepared for a fight. Make sure you check out all the podcasts on the outofhaven.net. The Nintendo Entertainment Podcast, the last episode we did, I, I, I had a blast talking about some of the Switch theories and rumors and such like that. Sony Centric obviously comes out every week. The Experience, the A1 Podcast, and the War on Infinite panels. And in 2017, we're more than likely going to have a brand new podcast. We're going to be talking a little bit more about that in the future. In addition, we got a bunch of things that are planned for 2017, so just make it big. The next convention we're going to be at, by the way, is going to be PAX East. So, you know, make sure you look for us there, man. PAX we'll be... East 2017. But, but we will have, we definitely will also have CES coverage as well. So, you know, we're, we're, we're going to keep track with everything. There's no way in hell we're making out the CES, though. Oh, no, no, no. We're not going to get there. We're, no. We're going to cover it from, from the comfort of our own home. But. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Clay Navigator Bowman. He's Keith Shot of Hacks and Mitchell Missiles. Chocolate Chocolate Missiles, pew pew. I have so <laughs> many damn names here. Yo, chocolate Missiles, let's go. Hey, keep on gaming, ladies and gentlemen. Peace out. Thank you for checking out this latest episode of the Out of Haven Experience. And as always, if you enjoy our content, be sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. It'll help us grow our channel greatly. Until next time, guys. See you later.